Hello, boys and girls, men and women of all ages, shapes, and sizes. My name is Owen Adams, and normally I'm coming to you live through the power of streaming, but this is something a little bit different that I just want to show you guys from the desktop with Click Team Fusion and pre recorded. I recorded this probably at least an hour before you're seeing it. I don't know how much editing this is going to take. Hopefully, not too much. Uh, as you guys may remember, some time ago, I actually made a game in Click Team Fusion and I posted it on the site to show you guys. It was very, very basic. Click Team Fusion, if you don't know, is very, very basic game design software. It's very accessible. It's in a, a way to make 2D games with very little coding experience, things like that. But it's a pretty good piece of software, and I really liked it. I've recently been getting back into it because uh, when I picked it up last time, I just didn't have the time. I just really didn't have the time to really dive into it. And so I've always been meaning to go back to it. The few videos I did on it were really, you know fun people seem to like them so i thought what i would do is jump back in tonight i had the evening off pretty much and uh see if i could refresh my memory a little bit make a game and then maybe make a quick video just showing you the game i made uh letting you guys know what let me, you guys can let me know what you think and uh i can show you a little bit about how i made it basically so this is the game now this is this almost the same game i showed last time except i completely built it from scratch because i figured the best way to get my brain going again would be to just try and remake the same game and just get back to where I was and then move on to something a little bit differently. Now, right now, this game has no sounds, so you will not be hearing any interesting noises. But uh, let me just show you the game to begin with. Currently, it has no name. Run application. Let's do this. So here's the game. Whoa, let's be careful. So you move the little guy with keyboard and mouse. He's designed to look like a uh, sort of the top down view of a knight, basically. What you have to do is collect the blue balls. Every time you collect a blue ball, that will add 100 points. And avoid the red blobs. Uh, if the red blobs get you, you will lose a life. You do not lose any points yet, though. I haven't added that kind of system to it. And uh, also avoid the little yellow bouncy ones. They're coming to get you. If the yellow bouncy things hit either a blue ball or a red ball, they will also destroy that ball. So even though the yellow bouncy things are an enemy, basically... Uh, they can also be a friend, because they can clear red ones out of the way if you need them to. Like, I can just ignore this blue one for a bit and give it a go. Now, this is early days right now. It's not a very complicated game, um, but it does have... Uh, when I made the video last time, I said basically the same things about this. Uh, you know, it has what my what my intention was to head out there was have a game that has a specific win condition, a way to win... Well, a way to keep playing, which is and a benefit, which is to increase your high score, and a way to lose, which is to lose your lives you have five lives if you touch a red blob five times you die and uh what this game didn't have last time actually when i made it previously i didn't have the yellow blobs in fact i didn't have a way to get rid of the red blobs so what used to happen was there really was an upper limit to how far you could take the game last time because after a while you would just accumulate enough red blobs that you would be uh, it would just become impossible to play so now with the presence of the little yellow uh, the little yellow bloops, which don't... Oh, there we go, that's my first life lost. Uh, the addition of the little yellow guys actually... Potentially... Oh, dear. Uh, potentially makes it possible to play indefinitely because you can you can keep waiting for enough yellow guys to appear. Uh, so that's basically the game. Now, like I say, pretty basic. Um, and I've, I'm not going to dwell on this game too much, because if you've been following this channel for a while, you've probably seen this, the video before. I say this video. This, Like I said, this is completely new. I rebuilt this. It looks exactly like the previous game, because I used exactly the same plan. Uh, I tried to just rebuild it from memory, without kind of looking up any notes about what I did last time. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, I don't actually have a built version of this for download uh, tonight, but... If you actually want to play a similar game, you can play the previous one. If you just check out the video that says, uh, check out the game I made from about 2018, 2017, you will you will see this this almost identical game going through here. Uh, and then uh, in a moment, I'm going to commit suicide and uh, and show you the next frame, basically. Uh, so basically, uh, that's it. That's the complete game right now. Uh, I'd like to actually play around with it, see if I can make it a little bit more nuanced. Because at the moment, it's it's not a great game. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be submitting this for Edge's Game of the Year awards or anything. But there you go. And when you die, this is what happens. You put your name in. Blurp. You get a high score. And you get this. Would you like to play again? If you pick no, the application closes. If you pick yes, 
blurp, it goes right around to the beginning again. Reset your score, reset your thing, tracks your high score. So we've got a few things here that um, are key to any game. There's an element of randomness, which is the... You don't know where the blobs are going to come in. They don't come in a, a random time, but you don't know the random position. Uh, you have lives. If you lose your lives, you lose. You have a win condition, which is to beat your existing high score, basically. Uh, and you have elements of static opponents and elements of motion. And, a, and a, a way to continue playing indefinitely, because in theory, you can those, you, you, those yellow blobs will eventually clear the map enough that you can, you know, make a bit of a bit of a run for it basically so it's a pretty good game well sorry it's pretty good i'm not <laughs> i'll be more humble than that it's a pretty complete little project in itself i don't think it's a very fun game uh i should say i think it's fun enough and i thought this when i built it last time which is it's fun enough for a test project where the goal was originally when i first did this just to see if i could make any game you know uh, I don't know if I lost a life when I hit the yellow blob, actually. That's something I might need to fix. So, anyway, I'm not going to dwell on that too much, because, like I say, I uh, I built this game a long time ago, and I rebuilt it from memory. But, like I say, I'm trying to get back into these Click Team Fusion videos, so I'm just... I'll nuke myself and demonstrate that... What was my high score that time? I have no idea. Would you like to play again? Oh, did it not save my score? That's weird. Okay. There may be some bugs to Ryan out. This time I'll say no. And we'll close out. What I didn't do last time, and what I'd like to do this time, is show you a little bit about how this game was made. This is only going to be a brief explanation. I won't call this a uh, a Click Team Fusion tutorial. Although, if people would be interested in some Click Team, tu uh, <laughs> uh, Click Team Fusion tutorials, I can link you up to some good resources. I'm probably not good enough to make any yet. Uh, but the way I made the, this, this was uh, basically uh, Click Team Fusion divides games into things called frames. So a frame is like an area of the screen that's currently doing a, a thing, one consistent thing. Think of it like a scene in a movie. So frame one is this, lives at the top, score at the top right, my character, and the three different types of object I'll encounter. And then frame two is this, the game over screen. This, is, this references the box that makes me choose whether you want to play again, and this is the high score. We don't, this is very big. This, uh, th how this works is all really simple. There's just, there is just an object you can put in Click Team Fusion that lets you choose multiple choices, and high score table is pretty much a pre-made object. Um, this is where all the interesting stuff is. So Click Team Fusion, what it's all about is it's all about making games uh, in such a way that you don't have to have any coding, and it's very, very accessible. So it might look a little complicated, but it was actually really simple. First thing I did was I made an object. So in... Click Team Fusion, you just insert an object, and then you get to choose different object types. And if you're going to make a player, you just pick an active object. There's all kinds of different ones that are a lot more complicated, do lots of different things. But this is really the, the most important one, active objects. Because you make an active, object, an, an active object, and then you basically just define for yourself what it's going to do. So I made this guy. And I drew this. Uh, that's, this is really simple. Here's the sprite in... Uh, in all its glory, and it's supposed to be, uh, it's pretty simple, it's just supposed to be, you know, a, a helmet with like a frill on, like a Roman helmet with like a, uh, like a stripe on the top, uh, a sword, a shield, and two like shoulders, that's, that's really, really simple, um, and then in here you design your sprite, so I just rotated this, so it faced four different directions, which is pretty easy, I might actually make a six directional one, I don't know, um, and then all you do really then is once you've made your object, you then give it um, different properties. So on here you have all the different properties you can give it. Movement, eight directional, and as soon as you set, and then you set the speed. So how fast it, how, what its maximum speed is, how fast it accelerates, how fast it decelerates, and different things you can, you can stick onto. But uh, what that lets you do is try movement. There we go. So... There you go. That, that's eight directional movement. Just lets you do that with the keyboards. So really, if you want to make a, if you're trying to make a really basic game in Click Team Fusion, the basics of it are really easy. New object, active object. Blurp. Every object starts off looking like that, but we'll just have, just to show you that it's all sort of custom done. Blah, 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 blah. A squiggle. Okay, so that's our object, and then currently has no movement, so we just go. Uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, Mouse control. Let's go with mouse control. And then... Try movement. Ooh, look, it's a mouse controlled thing. 
Okay, it's in a very specific area because it's laid out in that box, but there, it, basically all these different types of movement are available to you. Uh, we'll get rid of that. <laughs> I don't need one of those. I don't need this object to stay in there. Um, all these types of movement are available to you built into the game and it encompasses lots of different types of movement. Or if you want to, you can actually get deeper in and make something very specific. But for my little game, that's all I needed to do. And that was pretty simple. That That is the core of the game. If we just run this frame again, there you go. He's moving around. Great. And uh, setting the directions in the sprites, pretty easy. So the next thing I needed to do was make the obstacle, um, which is what I did next. So then I made this object. I just drew it. There we go. No different frames of animation for this one because it doesn't move. Uh, and then the problem with this, of course, is if that was just in there, just a drawing, and it moved around and did stuff, that doesn't really matter. What matters is how this interacts with this. So Click Team Fusion has this thing called an event editor, which is where the basic coding goes. Now, this starts to look a little complicated. Oh, actually, do you know, there's something else. There's something else I should show you. Uh, something else I did before that. So, if I make a new object here, and then I make it keyboard controlled. So this is the same, sorry, eight directional keyboard control. This is the same type of uh, movement as my other character. Watch what happens if I try and, whoops. Oh, you can leave the screen. So that was also a condition I had to work with. So uh, what I did was, and this is all pretty basic stuff. This is all covered in the tutorials, but for example, what what the event editor lets you do is this is a table of interactions between objects now this looks pretty complicated because you're looking in at the end of the game but it's actually pretty simple so for example the first one start of frame what that means is when the game begins start a frame so as soon as the frame starts it does a thing and then if we look at what it's doing we go over to the tick box these are different things that are in the game and different things like this is your player this is your keyboards and your mouse timers game rules different things so sounds uh so start a frame, it's going to do something. It's setting the number of lives to five and it's setting the score to zero. So every time the game begins, we want the score to start from scratch and we want the lives to be five because the default lives is three. Uh, and I thought five was a little better. So uh, we start the game and that basically does that. Then we set up this condition here, which is this guy. If blurp, if this, this, let's give him a name. So this is easier to, uh, so this is easier to follow. Knight. Here we go. So if knight leaves the play area, this happens. Stop. So this was a condition I could do. Leaves the play area. And the way you do this is you go, okay. Uh, well, so I, I won't go into the nitty gritty of how I set up that condition, but that was just a condition you can set. You can, well, I'll show you actually. You can do this. Uh, we'll pick uh, active two, position, test position. So you can do like, these are different. Th so what you can... I'll explain this a little more slowly. You can set up a condition, and what you can do is you can pick any object in the game. So, let's go with the red ball. So this is a condition that says, when the red ball, and then you get to pick what is it doing, collides. So, when it collides with another object, or when it changes direction, or when it, um, when it changes position. So, and then you can go do a thing. So this lets you choose your initial conditions. So this is like saying if, if the knight is here, if the ball is moving, if the such and such is doing such and such, and then this table here lets you say, do this. So what this condition here says is, if the knight leaves the play area, stop, stops moving. So, run the frame. If I try to leave the play area, boop, it stops me. Immediately stops me from moving. So no coding involved in that. And if you remember how to do it, it's pretty quick. Now, if you're into coding and you're very fluent in coding, it's that's pretty simple to code, as long as you've got an engine up and running. But this is a good way, if you, if you don't know that kind of thing, to give you a little bit of basics. And then this condition says, every five seconds, create the blue ball. And now it doesn't create it at a random location. It actually creates it uh, at a set distance from the night, but then it also moves it to a random location. So it creates, then moves. Um, so every five seconds, it creates a blue ball and then puts it somewhere random in the frame. And then this condition says, collision between blurp and blurp, so coll collision between the night and the blue ball. So if the night and the blue ball collide, the player gets 100 added to their score, 
and we destroy the blue ball so the blue ball doesn't stay on the screen. Every seven seconds, this creates a red ball. And then if the knight and the red ball collide, it uh, subtracts one life and it bounces the knight. That just makes you go... It's so you don't, like, you don't keep running. It makes you stop for a second. In practice, it only just slows you down a little bit, but it's so that you feel that when you hit the red ball and it destroys the red ball. And then this says, if the number of lives hits zero, end the game, basically. Go to the next frame. Every 12 seconds, we create that yellow bouncing ball. And then these set of conditions basically detail the ball because that bouncing ball is the most complicated object. So first of all, we needed to have like this one up here that says, if the knight tries to leave the play area, stop him moving. This one says, if the bouncing ball tries to move, leave the player area, bounce, basically. Uh, so that calls, controls the bouncing. And then these three are the different interactions. So if it hits the red ball, destroy the red ball and the yellow ball. If it hits the blue ball, destroy the blue ball and the yellow ball. If it hits the knight, doesn't destroy the knight, but it does take off a life and it destroys the yellow ball. So basically, all th this one table and the movement tabs for each object. So under each object, you get to sit, set up how each object behaves. Oh, hello. Uh, which is pretty simple. But then this table here basically controls everything about how this game works. So if we just run this again, this, this is all being controlled by the rules of this table, basically. So everything we've just said, you can now sort of see it come into play. Uh, there we go, pop it in. And so it's actually really, really simple. It's, there's no coding involved and you, you've put together a, a pretty decent game. Uh, well, I say a pretty decent game, a complete little game. That's, I keep meaning to say like a complete, a complete package and actually end up being like, yeah, it's pretty decent, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, baby, it's so good. Um, but actually it's, I, I think it's not too bad. Um, this was my, my first attempt at making a game when I first played with Click Team Fusion and I've been meaning to go back to it for a while. So there you go. I hope this was of interest to you. I really just did this for myself just because I wanted to... Um, I wanted to have a little play with it again and try and remind myself how the, uh, how the stuff all worked. But, um, yeah, I, I hope, uh, that has been interesting to you. And hopefully, there we go. Stay, keep yourself alive. I'm actually playing now. I'm actually trying to get my scarb. Uh, hopefully, the next time I make a video on this, because I do want to make some more of these, um, I will have something new to show you. But then my next job in Clicks Infusion is to actually add sounds to this game. Because with no sounds, the, the, the experience is very sort of partial. Uh, you know, you don't need a lot of sounds either, and they don't need to be complicated. Click Team Fusion itself comes with a decent set of libraries. But, you know, you could just, you could just do them with your lips. You know, every time it... And, uh, blurp, you know, you, could just, you just need something, a little something when you actually hit an object to make it feel a little less artificial. Ah, uh, there we go, I'm dead. So, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Um, I, if you've seen me make that game before, you'll probably be very disappointed because it's old hat. But, uh, yeah, I want to get back into that. I'm going to try and do a little bit of that maybe once or twice a week and, and post up my findings. So I'll, I'll post another video when, uh, when we have sounds. And if you enjoyed that and you'd like to see more, please do let me know and uh, let me know what you thought about it. And then, uh, I'll, I'll know if there's interest and in, in what more you'd like to see or if there's any types of games you would like to see me try and make and I'll see what I can do. All right, that was just a quit, up, quit update. A quick update. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.